Nick here from One Stop Tactical. Today's project is an AR-15 courtesy of the Norwich Police Department. They recently had a qualifying shoot and I got a ton of police officers who need their guns cleaned and just don't have the time to do it. Show you guys how I clean an AR-15, what I think is the proper way to clean one, some stuff that you'll need, what I recommend using. And as you can see, this one is extremely dirty. So real quick, I'm going to show you a few things that I use when I do my, my cleanings here, which I consider a professional service. These things are completely disassembled, gone through, and pretty much made as clean as possible. One thing I really like using is this Otis Ripcord. It's a nice boar snake. You actually don't have to use any attachments or anything with it, although it does have the um, threads to put any of your head your brush heads on or anything like that this is kind of my little go-to kit right here it's a pro shot universal kit so one thing I have in here that I would highly recommend to anybody who has an AR-15 or a similar style rifle with a chamber that has all the little grooves in it 223 chamber brush it's got these really heavy bristles on it to really get in the chamber. So these are very handy for getting all the grime out of the chamber there. Of course, your toothbrush or something similar. My go-to gun cleaner is the Hops M Pro 7. I really like this stuff. I think it does a good job without leaving any kind of residue behind or anything like that. And then my favorite product, Rand CLP. One of these bottles will last a long time. I've done several guns with this, and I still got about eh, maybe a quarter of a bottle in there. Uh, metal is porous, so as it heats up, it will actually absorb. What these guys claim is that the more you use this stuff, the more it's absorbed into the metal, the less you actually have to lubricate it down the line. I've found that so far to be true. Um, I use this on SIGs and Glocks where if you're shooting a lot of rounds through them, they start to develop the lines around the barrels. I'm sure you know you guys who have older guns that have shot a lot know what I'm talking about. This actually prevents that from happening. Not 100%, but quite a bit. All right, so getting down to the basics here, I'm sure there's gonna be some other items that I'll grab and use. So if I do, I'll tell you about those as we do it. Um, another handy thing when working on ARs specifically to take the bolt apart here is a pick. This is kind of a big one. You don't need something this big, but the little cotter pin that holds the firing pin in, you just got to take that out, grab that out like that, put that aside so it doesn't get lost. You can usually reuse these um, just about forever. Once you have that out, you'll be able to slide the firing pin out, which in this case is extremely dirty. I'm going to show you a trick too later that I use to really clean up this firing pin. So stay tuned for that. This locking right here, you wanna turn it sideways. It will slide out of there and then you'll be able to take the bolt out. This is disgusting. So cleaning the bolt carrier, gonna give it a quick wipe down, get all the excessive sludge off of there. Uh, I used to have an ultrasonic cleaner and usually what I would do is just drop all these parts right in the ultrasonic cleaner. I plan on buying another one pretty soon, but for now, we're going to do it the old-fashioned way. Another thing that's going to be real handy is some Q-tips. These are kind of gun-specific, but any Q-tips will work. I really like these because on this side, they got the really pointy edges that get into some creases and stuff like that really nice. I'm going to use some break-free CLP on this gun because it's very dirty and this stuff will break down a lot of the sludge in here. AR-15 
AR-15s don't require a heavy amount of lubricant, I don't think. I know some people like to run them super wet. I also know guys that run them completely dry. I would not recommend running it dry. I have had issues in the past feeding and guns locking up because people didn't lubricate them. So I would not recommend that. <laughs> This is a nylon brush too, not a brass brush. I usually don't ever use a brass brush. That's almost a tongue twister. basically it for the bolt carrier all the sludge is gone it's all wiped down and like I said the CLP actually left a pretty good coat of oil on it and you can tell because it's smooth and you can feel the um, there's no grit to it or anything it's very smooth so we're gonna set that aside pay some attention to the bolt real quick here Take the little nylon brush, really clean off that bolt face. This bolt is a mess. I don't know if you can, you'll be able to see it in the camera, but um, yeah, this is just caked on here. And this is one situation where I will try to use the brass brush to get some of that off of there. I usually don't ever use a brass brush. That's almost a tongue twister. This is some super, super fine sandpaper. Uh, it's not even, you, it feels like a regular piece of paper. There's no real texture to it. It's the only stuff that I would use. I'm gonna wet this down really good. You can even use oil if you wanted to. I'm gonna take this and just very lightly I'm going to give that a couple passes and that's just going to help us really get down back down to the metal it's much much cleaner now this is going to get a really good coat of the stuff I was telling you about the RAND CLP that's a little more than I would normally put on I'm just going to work that in really good that spot we just cleaned up over here, make sure there's a good coat of oil on that. And we'll set that aside. Now the firing pin, which is super easy to clean off. Just spray it down. Wipe it down. Got a little bit of excessive carbon buildup around the base here. It's not really a big deal, but um, the tip, that's what matters there. And that looks pretty good. So all I'm going to do is give it a quick hit with my trusty sandpaper. That's really all it takes. Just a quick little rub. And we're good. I'm going to use the brass brush just to get some of this carbon off of here. And yeah, she looks like brand new. That's what you end up with. A nice shiny firing pin. That's what we want. And the charge handle. Doesn't require much attention, obviously. But we do want to get all the grime out of there. We'll take our little pad here that's still got some oil on it and uh, just give it that a little coat. Nothing crazy. But you can see the spots where the metal contacts inside the upper receiver. It's all worn down there, so you know you do want some oil on that. Just a very, very light coat. 
All right, so now all our components, the bolt carrier, the bolt firing pin, charge handles clean. So the lower receiver, you shouldn't get too dirty on you. Um, everything's mostly held up in the upper receiver, most of the dirt and everything. So this one's really not that bad. I'm just gonna spray a little bit of this down in there. This is gonna help lubricate those springs. We'll soak all the excess up here. At the same time as removing the grime. If you wanna take the buffer out, you just gotta push in the detent. And then you just yank it out of there. It shouldn't be anything really down in there to clean, but you know, again, just to keep things thorough give it a quick wipe down basically that's it for the lower it's cleaned up it's got a little coat of oil on it that's all it needs wipe off all the excess onto the upper here this is going to be the biggest part of the project getting this thing clean especially this one because it is filthy there is just sludge everywhere so yeah Cue the montage. where the boar snake comes in handy. There's a bunch of different ones of these out there. Hops makes them. Uh, this one's an Otis. I like this one. You just feed it through here, wrap it around, and given its name, rip cord. And you rip it out. And then the chamber brush here. Just put that on to one of your little T handles or whatever kind of cleaning rod you might use. And then you're just gonna feed it in the back and give it a couple of these. I've already spent quite a while cleaning all the little crevices and everything else out on this thing. So at this point, the chamber is actually visible again and not covered in sludge. And we're just gonna put some oil in here. Again, just a little bit, it's all you need. I'm gonna put some up in where the charge handle goes. Right around the chamber. We're just gonna Use that drop that we put in there to spread around and coat everything. Once it's got a good coat on it, we're good to go. Uh, I'm gonna put a drop down the barrel. We'll use our rod with a couple of attachments on it. Put the needle head on there and a couple pads looks like brand new in there just get rid of the excess oil let's put our bolt back together here so as you'll remember we coated this already in oil we're going to put that back in all the way to the back as far as it will go and then orientation wise, the extractor pointing up this way. So if you're looking at the bolt face, the extractor will be on the left. Obviously just keep in mind you want that bullet shell 
to go out of the port. So unless you have a left-handed rifle, that's the way it's gonna go. You're gonna drop your cam right back in there. You go like that, make sure it's moving freely. You can go ahead and turn it sideways. That's locked in. You're gonna take your firing pin, just drop it in there until it's all the way in. Take your cotter pin, feed it through this side, making sure that it's behind the firing pin so that the firing pin can't come out. And you're gonna push that in. But if you have trouble putting that pin in, like a lot of trouble, it might be a good sign that it's time to replace it. So you can grab them from Brownells. A couple other good parts that you should have on hand if you're constantly assembling and disassembling an AR. The detent for the buffer. So this guy here. Also, the detent and spring for the rear takedown pin. It's always a good idea to have those on hand if you plan on taking this apart because they do go flying. A lot of times you'll forget that that's in there. You'll take it apart, it'll go flying across the room. I'm very happy with the way this came out. It's very clean compared to when it first came in here. That's another tip too if you want. After you're done cleaning the lower, you can set it upside down, put it aside while you're cleaning the upper and all that excess oil will just come out and then you can go ahead and wipe it up um, you know, gives it time to work its way through everything. So yeah, bolts back together. We're gonna drop that in here. Put your charging handle in first. It'll line up the little ears on it so that you can get it in the channel there. Gas tube with bolt face going forward towards the barrel. Put that right in that channel. Make sure your cam is forward. You won't be able to put it in if it's not. Drop it in, make sure it's locked in. Function check, this thing's got a flashlight on the front of it. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Grab your lower receiver, make sure the takedown pins are out. Starting with the front takedown. I'm gonna squeeze this on there, pop in that front pin, pop in the back pin, function check it. Bolts locked back. It's closed. Safety's working. Chamber's empty. It fires. We're good to go. Rifle's in tip top clean condition, oiled, and ready for him to bring back out into the field. So this has been another how-to with Nick from One Stop Tactical. If you guys have any questions or need any help with anything, just post a comment down below. I'll make sure to answer you right away. As always, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for the next video.